What you see here is the result of a 13 euro purchase on Amazon and one afternoon of work. It looks like a normal light bulb, but it can be used to effectively disable selected Wi Fi connections for as long as you choose. In this video, we will have a look at cheap Wi Fi enabled light bulbs, especially those with the ESP8266 inside. I will give some advice on how to find and differentiate these hackable devices from other ones and how to flash your own firmware onto them. My hope is that by the end of the video you will have a different view about smart devices. So you want to buy a smart home device? Don't. These things are a privacy and security hazard you should not let in your home. Not even for free and especially not if you pay money for it. Thanks for watching. Okay, but seriously, I need to give a fair warning here. No smart home system you can buy today will be safe. It doesn't matter which brand name is on it, how expensive, open source, proprietary it is, or how much the seller promises you military grade encryption and other bullshit. Nothing is entirely secure. And then, well, no updates will last forever. Companies will not afford to provide lifetime updates to a product that could theoretically last many decades, as it's the case with these lamps. Other lamps use proprietary hard and software that makes it not very easy for us to customize and get full control over them. But don't think they are more secure or anything like that. My point is, you usually don't have any idea what's running on these devices and if the update's actually gonna change something or turn your device into a spy bug or anything. So all ESP8266 smart home devices I saw had some noticeable things in common. A weird brand name you never heard of, a clear ripoff of a known brand, or a brand that is known for cheap Chinaware like Karma. Long and confusing product headlines and descriptions with bad translations, but keywords like Wi-Fi, smart, RGB, dimmable, smartphone or app controlled, no hub needed, Google Home, IFTTT, Alexa, Smart Life, 2.4 GHz, time schedule. Badly edited product pictures, sometimes with stock photos, sometimes the same pictures are used on different smart products, even from different brands. Then the use of the Smart Life app or a rebranded version of it, meaning a different colors, a different logo, but still very similar and basically the same apps. I only bought light bulbs for this project, but you can also find smart power plugs, smart switches, smart door sensors, smart plan sensors, and probably many more useless devices that also have an ESP8266 in them. But I bought four of these lamps. I will link to the exact German Amazon page in the description where I bought them. But keep in mind that there are many other places you can buy these and they come in slightly different designs, packages and brandings. So first I bought a lamp with a E27 socket for 12 euros 95. The ESP however is on a separate PCB here and the pins are not labeled. Very annoying, but luckily I found the pin out online. It's using an MY9291 chip to control the LEDs. There is an Arduino library to support it, so that makes it easy. Data pin is on pin four and the clock is on pin five. Then I have another 7 watts E27 lamp for 12 euros 96, a whole one cent more expensive. But this lamp was way more accessible because everything was on the top PCB and with labeled pads. The LEDs are controlled via PWM on pin 14 for red, 12 for green and 13 for blue and pin 4 for white. Then a 5 watt lamp with a smaller E14 socket also easily accessible on the top PCB with labeled pads, uh, but using the MY9291 chip again with data on 13 and clock on pin 15. And last but not least, a 4.5 watt lamp with the even smaller GU10 socket. It's the smallest Wi-Fi lamp I could find. It's built with multiple layers of PCBs and can be tricky to access, but it's not impossible. And the pins are labeled, yay! Controlling the LEDs is easy again, just using PWM, pin four for red, 12 for green, 14 for blue, and five for white. It's important to note that lamps are usually relatively easy to open and access, even if the pins are not labeled. Other smart home devices might not be. 
I saw smart power plugs where the case had to be broken completely to get hardware access. But if you want to write and test your own firmware, it's usually a good idea to have at least one device with direct hardware access. Now that you found the light bulb of your dreams, hopefully with an ESP8266 in it, you'll probably want to flash some useful firmware onto it. The default one requires the Smart Life app or a rebranded version of it. And that thing wants your GPS, your login credentials, Wi-Fi credentials, and basically everything it can get in terms of data and metadata from you. Now, the great thing about this is the LAMP is downloading and installing unsigned firmware updates automatically once you give it access to the internet. Okay, well, that's actually terrible, but also great because that way we can spoof the update procedure and basically inject our own firmware image. So we don't need to break the device open. We can uh, flash our own firmware remotely. Sadly, I won't have time to guide you through this whole procedure, but I will link to the GitHub repository that is explaining the whole thing pretty well. I only flashed my devices by soldering wires on, but just that you know, that can be quite a pain. So here are my general how to hack smart lamps tips. First, make sure the lamp is not plugged in. Just be very careful. There is a tiny power supply in the lamp and you don't want to get electrocuted. Really watch out what you're doing here. Fixing a cheap piece of spyware is not worth dying for. Second, open it. On most lamps, the cap just pops up or has some kind of screwing mechanism. Then you need to check if pins are broken out, like RX, TX, GPIO0, VCC, ground, reset. On some lamps, the ESP8266 is actually on another layer of the whole structure, so maybe you have to screw open another part of the lamp to get access to it. If the pins are not labeled, go and research online if you can find more info about the lamp or try to contact sellers if they can provide you with a schematic. Three, find out which hardware and pins are used. Now that you have the lamp open, see if you can spot any other chip, maybe the MY9291 that is used to manage the power and color of the LEDs. Some lamps use different setups. Find out which pins are used and what chip controls the LEDs. If you can't find info about the pinout online, then the best shot you have is taking a multimeter and trying out continuity tests on different pins until you figured the pinout out or just trial and error by uploading code, which can also work. Four, hook up a USB serial adapter. Connect RX to TX, TX to RX, ground to ground and 3.3 volt to VCC. Two of my lamps, however, had RX and TX labeled wrong, so I had to connect RX to RX and TX to TX in order to get it working. Important is to connect GPIO0 to ground before you power the lamp on. That way the ESP8266 gets into its flashing mode. If you power it and GPIO0 is high or floating, it will boot up normally and you won't be able to flash your firmware. I used this Frogo programmer board I got from Tindy. It has all the pins broken out easily and labeled correctly. Also, it has an on and off switch which came in very handy. 5. Dump the firmware. Now that you can connect to your device, it's a good idea to dump the firmware just in case you want to restore factory settings at some point. There's a great tutorial I will link in the video description, but basically you just have to run this command with the ESP tool and then it will download the entire content of the flash chip. 6. Find out if open source firmwares support your lamp. Now I used uh, Espurna. As is, is porn. I have no idea how to pronounce this, but check their release page if there is a bin file for your lamp or you look if there are issues open or check the hardware configuration file. 7. Flash it. So if you found a good firmware or you wrote your own, the only thing left to do is flashing it. Again, check the tutorial. I will link in the description, but basically you just have to run another one-liner with the ESP tool and that's it. <laughs> I have flashed one lamp with the DOFA firmware, one with the DOF detector and two other lamps with the ESPURNA firmware. So 
the D offer, it creates an access point with a web interface where you can scan and select networks to attack by sending the authentication frames. This only works on 2.4 GHz connections, but if vulnerable, you can effectively block a Wi-Fi connection using this technique. It's just a proof of concept, but it shows how easily you can turn a friendly smart home device into something that disables your entire home Wi-Fi with little chance of detecting it unless you know how it works. Which leads us to my second lamp, the D off detector lamp. It's a normal white light as long as everything is okay, but when it detects the authentication attack, it turns red. It's another cool proof of concept to show how easily you can turn a friendly smart home device into something actually useful to protect your network instead of undermining security and privacy. And then the other two lamps, Flash 50 ES Puna. This one is a open source firmware for these ESP8266 based light bulbs and it offers a great alternative to the default firmware these lights came with. It also creates an access point and the default password is Fibonacci and the login name is admin. You don't need an app to register for anything but you can make it connect to your home network if you like or to other services in order to make it work with your Alexa Home, Siri, Cortana and whatnot. But you have the choice. It shows that you can still use cheap and insecure devices for your smart home without sacrificing your privacy. In terms of security, however, it depends how you configure it. So this is something for smart home enthusiasts, in my opinion, and the potential dangers are the same. But here you have a open community around it and you can easily audit the code yourself, make modifications, additions, if the features that are provided are not enough for you. It's definitely a much better alternative to the closed source proprietary firmware that you can have no control over. I just received this lamp from Travis Lin. He's producing and selling the D-Offer boards you can find on Tindy and AliExpress. I told him about my research on these lights and he found someone that is offering lamps with custom firmware. This is a sample of one of these lights. I must say it's very easy to open and access but very hard to close again after you cut the silicon glue that is keeping everything in place. It's a very different model compared to the ones I bought. But what do you think? Should we look for a good light bulb to sell with custom firmware? And if so, what kind of firmware or would you rather make your own? I did not get into details on many things here, but there is more to this whole smart home device topic, especially regarding security or modding and hacking them. I just focused on ESP8266 light bulbs here. The market, however, is flooded with cheap smart home devices and people go crazy about them. Personally, I don't see the need of turning my lights on and off when I'm not home. Even if you think that's really necessary, is it worth the price you pay? Not only in money, but giving up parts of your privacy to some company and risking your security, the security of your own home? This goes further. Devices can become parts of botnets to attack other internet devices or simply destroy your lamp. Some devices are poorly built. Maybe you think this is all tinfoil hat and what would be the use for the Chinese if they could turn my light bulb on and off anyway? Well, it can still collect metadata, could analyze the Wi-Fi to see how many people or devices are in the room, how active their devices are at which points of time. Most people forget just how much you can read out of metadata. And with these devices, you not only give your data away for free, you pay for them. You pay companies to take your data. Another point is environment. These devices are not built to last very long. It's very likely you throw them away within the next two or three years anyway. Oh, also, if the Wi-Fi chip breaks or gets disabled, you can't use the light anymore. Without the ESP8266, the light is just dead. So don't think you can easily remove the spyware hardware from your lamp one day. You'll need to write your own firmware first. The ESP8266 or other microcontrollers that are used are between the lamp and the power source. And if they are broken or disabled or anything happens to them, your LEDs won't turn on. At least that was the case with all the designs I have seen. <laughs> I will link the mentioned projects in the video description and hope you can take away something from this video. I highly recommend you watch the talk Smart Home Smart Hack from the 35C3. There you can learn many details about these lamps that I couldn't cover in this video. 
Most content on YouTube about smart home devices is just comparing the user experience and whether or not it's worth the price. Personally, I have a little grudge against these tech YouTubers. The videos are very high quality, but they never go deep into the tech, which is wasted potential in my eyes. Looking at you, everything Apple Pro. The reason these things are even illegal is because this can uh, block the signal going to emergency services or something like that. Yeah, fun fact, that's bullshit. Luckily, I know some people on YouTube that can also make high quality videos and don't ignore people with more insight on the topic and I hope to collaborate with those to provide you with more specific tutorials on this topic. Well, that seems like something you probably shouldn't be able to do. So my goal here was to give a better impression on the topic in general and I hope it was interesting for you not only as hackers but for makers, tech enthusiasts and just quote unquote normal people alike. This entire video took a long time to make, which is also why I'm planning to make the next Insecure Space podcast about IoT and smart home to dive deeper into this topic. Anyway, I have a lot of projects to catch up on now, so believe me when I say this. Thanks for watching.